Today started with a plunging stock market in Canada and in the United States too. So if you're a Canadian professor or pundit, you could talk about the result that affects your own country, your own pension plan. You could, or you could attack Trump. Like this professor, Paul Ferry, and I'm not really picking on him, um, but this is what I mean. He quoted a tweet from Donald Trump a couple months ago, boasting about how well the stock market was doing then. Do you see that at the bottom there? And then he wrote himself, Sir, can we get an update on this? I'm curious to find out more. <laughs> I mean, that's funny, I guess. I mean, the stock market plunging isn't funny for anyone whose pension funds are invested in them, which actually would include that professor. But um, look, professors have a job for life. But anything to tweak Trump, orange man bad. But again, I'm not picking on this guy, Paul Ferry. I sort of like him. It was just the first example I came across. He's a Canadian professor. So why is he grilling Trump instead of Trudeau about our plunging stock market? Trump is actually ahead of Trudeau in every respect on the coronavirus. He raised the alarm much earlier. He spent money much earlier. He had press conferences with public officers of health much earlier, he brought in quarantines earlier, even the cruise thing, he was ahead of Trudeau. He's ahead of Canada by days or weeks, and in some cases by months, depending on what action. I should remind you that when the first cases of coronavirus arrived in Ontario, it was the Ontario provincial government that had an emergency weekend press conference. Doug Ford's people, Trudeau and his people were AWOL. Um, Trudeau's still sporting that vacation beard. He's still on vacation mode. So why is the instinct in Canadians in Canada's commentary class to mock Trump, but not to mock Trudeau. Yesterday when it was announced that the 237 Canadians on that cruise ship would land in Oakland, Trudeau wasn't working. Do you see that there? It says personal. He took the whole day off just for fun. When does the prime minister of a G7 country ever take a day off for fun, let alone in the middle of a crisis or several crises? But today's itinerary, on the day of the stock market crash, on the day of the virus, on the day the oil price tumbles, which will affect taxes and royalties and balances of trade, Trudeau is spending it doing feminist photo ops. I'm not kidding. Let me read from his itinerary today. The prime minister will participate in an armchair discussion with representatives of CEO Ventures. Get it? Minister of Small Business, Export Promotion, and International Trade, Mary Ng, will be in attendance. Oh, good. Oh, good. Um, then at 11.15, busy day, the Prime Minister will participate in a roundtable with representatives of CEO Ventures. Minister of Small Business, Export Promotion, and International Trade, Mary Ng, will be in attendance there, too. And then he flies to Ottawa for what? The Prime Minister will participate in an after-school STEM, that's Science, Technology, Engineering, Math Workshop, for girls hosted by Actua. So busy day. I mean, he's logging five hours today. Um, three photo ops in five hours, that's a pretty good clip. All to prove how feminist our male feminist, super feminist is, because I guess that's the most important thing going on in the country right now, isn't it? I'm sure it's important to have girls in math, um, but maybe that's not actually the constitutional responsibility of the prime minister in the midst of one, two, three crises. Look, I don't know what the whole answer is to coronavirus. Here's something Trump tweeted this morning. He said, so last year, 37,000 Americans died from the common flu. It averages between 27,000 and 70,000 per year. Nothing is shut down. Life and the economy go on. At this moment, there are 546 confirmed cases of coronavirus with 22 deaths. Think about that. Okay, I will think about that, but I want to know if coronavirus is going to be worse and how much worse and what we're doing about it as a country, as an individual, what should I do about it? I don't have those answers yet. And viruses don't respond to political weapons, tweets, polls, campaign speeches. They're, they're objective. They're inanimate. They don't care about human politics. The great disgrace of the World Health Organization, which ought to be leading the fight but has been co-opted and corrupted by China, is that instead of <laughs> fighting the flu, they're engaging in politics. Look at this. They're talking about ethnicity. They're telling people what to call the flu. They don't want it called the Wuhan, Wuhan flu or the Chinese virus. They say that's racist, even though it did, in fact, come from China. 
I mean, German measles, Spanish flu, we say those things, they're all named after the place they came from. But you're racist if you call it Wuhan flu or China flu, even though that's where it's from. Look, I understand why China's propaganda mills are focusing on that uh, to distract, but the World Health Organization has discredited itself. So I'm not much interested in politics, but I'd like to see my country's leader at least pretend to be on the job and at least try to stay ahead of things instead of just taking the Chinese line. There's nothing to worry about, so stop being so racist. I think we'll get through it. I hope so for myself, for my family and friends, our company, our viewers, our country, for the world. I'd like a normal life, not a life of quarantine like Italy, or the life of bizarre martial law like we see leaking out of China. What are they spraying there, by the way? What is that? And what's the point of spraying the street by the way, when it's people who have the virus. That's very, very strange, isn't it? I hope we'll get through. I think we'll get through it. I hope it's not as bad as our own imaginations or what Hollywood has told us an epidemic would look like. But I'm pretty sure if we get through it, it won't be because of anything that our vacationing photo op prime minister does. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.